Good evening. Hi, I'm Senator Liz Krueger. I welcome you to, whether you're watching on Zoom or Facebook or calling in to our virtual town hall series, part one, a guide to debt, understanding credit, credit cards, and your credit score. As always, we have closed captioning as an option tonight. As a viewer, you can activate your closed captioning to view the text on your device. If you're in Zoom, click on live transcript in the meeting controls to start viewing closed captioning. If you're on the Facebook Live event, you will see a setting button on the bottom right-hand corner of the video. Click on CC for closed caption to activate the process. We find it very helpful to use the closed captioning um, nowadays, and it really helps many people who may have some hearing issues but not have complete deafness to be able to see and hear things more clearly when they're on the computer. Um, this forum is being recorded for, and so everyone who RSVP will receive an email with links to the event video and the resources that are going to be posted in the chat. Um, so within a few days, along with the presenters' PowerPoints. So don't worry if you think you need to take a pencil and scribble everything down, because it's the only way you'll be able to hold on to that information. We're going to be sending you everything, so you can really just focus on listening to our presenters. Before we begin tonight's program, I want to give you a little update on public health issues as we know them today. Yes, we're still talking about COVID again. As you may have heard, we're experiencing a new COVID-19 wave. And even though this wave is not as severe as other waves in the past, it is causing a number of coronavirus infections and hospital, hospitalizations to increase. To help avoid contracting the coronavirus, you may want to take precautionary measures, such as wearing those masks everybody owns by now, in public indoor locations and around large groups of people. The good news is the CDC Advisory Committee is meeting tomorrow about the Moderna, Novavax, and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines, that sh the new ones that should be available by the end of September. The best way to protect yourself against the coronavirus is to stay up to date with all of your COVID vaccinations, because even if you get COVID after you get a vaccination, and it can happen, you will get a much lighter version and much, much less likely to end up having to be hospitalized. And of course, remember, particularly if you feel that you're age vulnerable or health-wise vulnerable, sign up for your flu shots and also consider getting um, a pneumonia um, vaccination as well. It seems like all the diseases lately are aimed at our respiratory system. So for anybody who's above 60 or suffers from any kind of immune issues, getting all the vaccinations is a smart idea. But of course, always talk to your doctors to make sure they agree. Uh, my office will provide information when we know more about when the updated vaccines will be available. So now moving on to today's event. Our town hall is the first of a three-part financial roadmap series. Over the next three weeks during one-hour sessions, we will cover the basics of credit, income taxes, and investing. To guide us through the journey tonight, we have three experts from the Financial Planning Association of Metro New York. Oh, we have two tonight, actually. Tonight's session is titled A Guide to Eliminating Debt, Understanding Credit, Credit Cards, and Your Credit Score. Our presenters this evening are Anja Lusink, who is an MBA and is a certified financial planner and here tonight as member of the Advocacy Committee, Advocacy Committee of the Financial Planning Association. And she will also be joined by Stephanie Chow, a CPA and a certified financial planner, also from the Advocacy Committee of the Financial Planning Association. I wanna thank them in advance for participating with us tonight. After they present, I'll be moderating a Q&A portion 
where we will go through questions we've already received in advance. But if you have additional questions, you'll be able to type them into your Q&A on either of the systems you're on. And if we have time, we will try to get to additional questions. It is now my pleasure to introduce Anya and Stephanie. Hello, both of you. Okay, great. I'm gonna turn it over to you ladies, thank you. Thank you, Senator Kruger. Uh, Stephanie and I, we are delighted to be here as members of the FPA, the Financial Planning Association, which is the leading membership organization of certified financial planners, profession, planner professionals, and those engaged in the financial planning process. Um, tonight, we are talking about debt and credit. We have a lot of topics to cover in not much time. We share uh, on screen a presentation. Um, and because it's a lot of information, a lot of, um, um, a lot of text, uh, we thought it might be an easier way if Stephanie is going to ask me some questions. And I probably will summarize some of the slides that you later can read through when you get the materials. Um, and that way we will hopefully cover all the materials within the, a lot of time and later be available for questions. So. Anya, Anya, I am so excited about our conversation tonight. I hope to draw on your vast experience in these areas. First of all, why is it so important not to have debt? Well, um, let me go to the slides. Um, that is, um, the, the point is that everyone has only so much income that you will make during your life. Your income should be used for your living expenses now and for your living expenses in the future when you cannot make money anymore, but also for any big purchases like real estate, uh, an apartment or a house or any other goals you have, like uh, sending your kids through college um, or whatever larger uh, purchases you want to do. So th those are two things for your income now. If you have debt, that will be paying for your spending in the past. So that is something that is um, taking away your focus from building wealth in the future. Um, you also have, um, a that, that is specifically the case for bad debt and that bad debt are um, credit cards specifically. There is also good debt and that helps you to increase your value. And in that case, we think about mortgages and also uh, student loans, but student loans only when used responsible because student loans is actually a totally different topic that we cannot go into tonight. Anya, how can we get rid of debt? Well, that's not so easy. Um, it, it needs work and it needs commitment. The commitment is not to take on any new debt. And then it's a matter of getting control over your spending. So first, um, and then there are several steps. Um, and we have some worksheets that I want to share with you. I, uh, how to work, work to, with the worksheets I, uh, is in the presentation, but I will show them here and then uh, we'll guide you through them. So the first worksheet we have is create a spending plan. And that is by uh, have, listing all your income, your income and your expenses. Um, and as you see, there are different ways of spending. Um, there's a survival, a livable, and a comfortable uh, way of spending. When you are in paying of debt mode, you need to have a survival spending and, um, um, plan. And that means that you have only, um, that you will only spend on your needs and not on your wants. And I hope that you understand the difference between those two. Um, so your needs are absolutely the things that you cannot live without. 
and then um, you put all that on this this sheet and then you find an, uh, what your spending is in the months and ho um, hopefully there will be some money left over and that money is going to um, to pay off your debt. Um, you see on this uh, spending plan is also something for savings. Uh, so while you're paying off that, we recommend to also put some money, not much, but at least a little bit in, short, in savings because you need to get in the habit of putting money away in savings, but also you need to build an emergency fund. Without an emergency fund, you will, as soon as something happens, have to go back to your credit card. And that is, um, if you have the emergency fund, you have money available for that. So this is the first worksheet that I want to share with you. The second one is then a matter of um, how to, um, what are the debt and debts and how do you pay them off? There are so many clients that I worked with on their debt that did not know how much debt they had or whether how what the interest rate was that they paid on their debt. So the first thing you start with is getting all your papers together about your debt and listing them. List all your creditors. Then the second step is reorder this in a way that the highest interest rate goes first. And the highest interest rate that you pay on, uh, on that, and I have seen very high interest rates, credit cards uh, nowadays, you pay 29% on them. If you're lucky, 22%. Uh, but that is about, um, th that, that is uh, very expensive. So the most expensive debt is what you pay off first. And the rest of the debt, you only make your minimum payments. So here it says, now attack number one, debt number one, repaying as, as much more of the minimum than you can each month until it is gone. So, um, and then you start with the second one. I have um, an example of this. We just go, here is an example. This is a debt repayment plan. Here are all the creditors. Uh, you see here the total is $6,000, finance rate $29.95. Here are all the minimum payments. So you, once all the minimum payments are paid, you have available each month $650. Then you uh, pay the minimum and the rest goes to the highest interest first. 460, so then you can pay it faster off. Um, I want to give also something, some people feel very comfortable or very happy when they see that one debt is eliminated. So if you feel that you want to reduce the debt and pay off the, this small amount of $250, you can do that. And then you have one debt less and that may give you some confidence. So I just want to mention that, that could be an alternative, but, um, and this one is also expensive. So. Thank you. Thank you. These worksheets are really helpful. Uh, now we'll continue with credit. Um, Anya, what exactly is credit? How is it used and how do you establish good credit? Yeah, well, credit is actually an, a loan. A credit or a loan is granted by a lender who expects that you will repay them. Um, but the lender wants to know whether you are credit worthy before he gives you a loan. So the consumer reporting agencies, they provide information about your borrowing and uh, bill paying habits. Um, and who, who wants to know this? Well, there are a large number of, of uh, organizations that nowadays want to know about your credit, like your mortgage bank, your insurance company, your car loan company, um, your co-board, 
your landlords, uh, student loans or loan organizations, and, and, and there probably are even more than I mentioned here. So um, what is necessary is that you have to start with developing an, um, a, a credit history. So that is the way to establish credit. Um, I also want to mention that the only way or the best way to uh, develop, to establish um, or develop a debt, debt history is to use credit cards. If you use your uh, debit card, which, your, which immediately takes money from your credit, from your own checking account, you do not develop a debt uh, history. So that is, um, um, that, then it can be difficult to start with, uh, with credit cards. Um, you have to apply for it. And if you're new, then they probably will not uh, grant you one, but you don't have that debt history. So then I would suggest to either get a secured credit card that also, an, um, a secured credit card is where you uh, put some money on yourself, say $500, and then you are allowed to have that same amount as loan. And But at the same time, it, develop, um, it is reported how you pay it back. And then another way is to get a co-signer for a loan. Um, parents often do that for students. Um, but be very careful uh, to do this because you can get in a lot of trouble because if the original signer doesn't pay their loans, you have to pay for them. So then um, your other question was from what is, um, what, how, what, what is reported on the credit report? And that is, um, for instance, the report shows a lender whether you are credit worthy and what impacts your paying back a loan or credit. So you see on there how many bills um, you have monthly, how you pay them back, whether you do it in a timely way or whether you're late, whether you uh, get any late fees, um, whether you have been sued is on your credit report, have you filed for bankruptcy is on there. You can also see how many outstanding loans you have, what the mix of loans is, and all those things are reported on you. The information stays, well, it's a bit complicated, but in, in general, the information stays on there about seven years. That's, that's very helpful. Where can I get a copy of a credit report and how, sh how should I review it? Um, you know, everyone is entitled to a free ready, uh, credit report every 12 months. There are um, the major um, credit reporting agencies are Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Um, the point is that it, there are a lot of organizations that, said, that says, get your free credit report, but they are not, even if you Google, uh, go to the website free credit report, that is not free because they give, give you, um, you sign up for a kind of monitoring plan. So the first month is free, you get a free credit report, but then you pay every month for that service. So the only, um, the only uh, site that is free for all of them is annualcreditreport.com. Uh, you can also uh, get it, uh, by phone or by mail. Review your credit report mistakes. There are a lot of mistakes. There's you. Many people discover their identity thefts by uh, reviewing their annual credit report. You can also see who inquired about you uh, when you are uh, apply for a loan. There they call that a hard inquiry, and that has an impact on your credit score. Um, a soft inquiry, that is, for instance, if you get all these offers for uh, credit cards that are soft, uh, 
soft inquiries, not self-initiated, and they do not affect your credit score. So now. Thank you, that's very helpful. Um, now we're gonna talk about credit scores. I often get emails from my banks regarding changes in my credit score. What is a credit score? How does having debt impact my credit score? Um, yes. Um, a credit score is, is actually your profile's information on a credit report summarized as a number on a scale of 300 to 850. A good score is about 760, 750 and higher. Um, you have to realize that each credit reporting agency has its own score. So that when you get three reports with a score, uh, there might actually, when you get a report, there might not be a score with it because often um, they, some send it for free, but some also ask you to pay for it. Um, but those scores can differ. Um, in fact, the only thing what's important about the score is to know your score is when you want to apply for a loan. Because, you, but then you want to know what is the score that the banks are going to look at. And that is the My FICO, that's the FICO score. And you can get information about it on myfico.com. But that score, um, usually you have to pay for. Uh, unless you go to a bank and then they have to give you a report when they uh, uh, get, get one. When you apply for a loan and they get a report about you, then you need to get a, a copy. But before, I would advise uh, to get a credit report before applying for a loan because you want to see what's on there because there's so often mistakes on it. How does your score impact your wallet? That is um, considerable. For instance, um, if you have a high score, and I have here an example that is uh, a bit old because the annual uh, percentage rates for mortgages have gone up, but we understand still that a high score has a lower, uh, gives you a lower rate than, an, uh, than a lower score that gives you a high rate. So this is an example <laughs> that shows um, a mortgage, a 30-year fixed mortgage rate of $300,000. Um, for a high score, the rate is 3%, 3.18%. For a low score, and I make a big jump from 760 to 620 or 640, you pay um, about one and a half percent more, 4.77. And the monthly payment goes from 12.94 to 15.69. And over the total of the loan, that is a different difference of about $100,000 in interest that you pay more. So that is how your score impacts your wallet. So if you can, uh, repair your credits before applying for a loan, you should do that, you should try that. So what are factors that impact your credit score? Well, there are several um, factors. Um, the one is new credit, that is opening credit, car uh, credit cards. If you open a credit card a new, or a store card, you will have um, more credit available and your score goes down. 15% um, and that, that's hurting your uh, credit score with 10% um, or, or that counts as 10%. 15% um, um, of, of your score is caused by the length of your credit history. So if you have an old cre uh, credit card that you don't use anymore and you think, oh, well, I better clo close that, don't close it because that affects and that's uh, coming to the, uh, that, that affects the total credit available to you that goes down. 
and the total credit available to you um, is um, when that goes down, then that is, um, let me see, um, that is, that is this amounts of the, the number um, that is um, amounts owed that has an impact of 30%. And that means how much of your total available credit is used. And you should, for instance, if you have 10,000 available over several cards, you should only use less, and, and I wrote it down here, you should use less than 50% of your credit because using, um, using between 20 and 50%, that is neutral. If you use more, you get a negative, um, has a negative impact on your credit card. And if you use less than 20% of your available credit balance, then you will, uh, then it adds points. So of the, the $10,000 that is available of all your credit cards, you should not use more than $2,000. That gives you additional points. If you use about $5,000 of it, then um, that's neutral. And then another one is the credit mix. How do you have a mortgage? Do you have a car loan? Do you have credit cards? If you don't have a mortgage or a car loan, then, well, you have get a little bit lesser, less, less points. Uh, but don't, don't get a mortgage or a car loan to get a higher credit score. It's not worth it. And then the last one is the payment history, paying your minimum balance or the whole balance on time. And that is the same, whether you pay the minimum or the whole balance. So that is 35%. And that is the highest value the high, that has the most impact on your credit score. Thank you, that's very informative. Now let's talk about credit cards. The yes. way we use credit cards have big impact on our credit scores. Can you tell us more about credit cards and how to best use them? Yes, well, a credit card is uh, actually just a card that gives you a revolving loan that allows you to make purchases. You get a loan till a certain due date that you then you have to pay the loan or the minimum payment. If you do the minimum payment, then you get interest over the rest and you have that loan. And that interest is always going to be very high. So um, my recommendation for using a credit card is to pay it off every, um, every month. This is for me, the use of a credit card is the only way is to, uh, to pay the balance off every month to make use of a free loan because that's now in fact what you get use the card to keep track of your spending. You can see exactly what you bought. And then also get miles and rewards points, which really helps. And it helps you build your credit to a high score. So that is the use of how I would recommend the use of a credit card. But what should you know about your credit card when you, uh, when you apply for one? Um, well, applying for a credit card, I really would do some uh, research on, on, and just Google it, uh, best credit cards and read about all the differences. And you should understand what the fees are. What is the interest rate? Is it only a teaser interest rate or is it going to be for, because sometimes they have a low amount to, to have you sign up, but then after a year or half a year, it becomes a higher rate. Um, and then uh, what is the, the maximum balance that, that they provide you as loan? Um, annual fee for the card, late fee, what happens if you, uh, if you pay one day after the due date? Um, you, they immediately give you a fee. Um, can you withdraw over the limit? And what other fees there are? So that's... Um, that's all that you want to know. Read the information on the agreement that you sign. 
And then I, some last uh, practical tips about credit cards. Set up an automatic payment plan for, uh, uh, of the minimum amount due. That way you will never have a late fee. Uh, keep track of what you are, but pay the whole amount. I mean, you, there's an automatic payment that will be paid, but pay the whole amount then manually. Uh, keep track of what you are spending on your credit card so you can pay the balance in full. And for large purchases, I would say save first and get interest. Buying on credit is always very expensive. Use your credit cards uh, to get rewards. Thank you for your insights. This is what I learned. Debt is very expensive, prevents you from building your future. Society run on credit cards. Be smart, use them to get a free loan, get rewards and build a good credit score. Use a credit card as cash, keep track, make sure you have money available to pay it off every month. Well, thank you so much. I want to hand it over to Senator Kruger for Q&A uh, session. Okay, thank you too for- helping. Thank you both. Thank you, Anya and Stephanie. You gave us a lot to think about. And again, terrific resources that have been put up on chat and people will be able to get and follow up with and do their own homework based on their own experiences after tonight's event. Um, we're going to now jump to the Q&A section. Um, and again, just to remind you, there'll be this follow-up email with all the links and all the resources and the PowerPoint presentation that was used. And we do have a number of questions. So low-income borrowers, how do you overcome the deficit of credit card debt when your income barely meets your daily needs? Are there some banks or credit unions or something else that are more welcoming to low-income people? Um, it, it is a problem for low-income people who barely make their, their, um, their, their needs. Um, there are unfortunately no resources that uh, of banks or, or credit unions, et cetera, that give you a loan to pay them off. That, but if you saw that, I think the only way to do so is trying to make more income. And the other way is budgeting and be very um, yeah, aware and controlled in your spending. That is the only way. And I'll just throw in, this can be for another evening's discussion. Sometimes people are eligible for government benefits that they don't know they're eligible for. And so, for example, SNAP, which is the new name for the old food stamp program, um, that there are many people, particularly older people, who are eligible but don't know, so they don't apply. And if you can get $100 a month, let's say, towards your food budget um, through the SNAP program, that's $100 you're not drawing down on your limited income. So again, another discussion, but you can also reach out to my office for help on eligibility for benefits that you just might not know you're eligible for, but they're out there. Okay, interest rates. How much interest are credit card companies allowed to charge? I know sometimes you see these numbers on the back of your bill um, that are really terrifying. And can you negotiate a lower interest rate um, when you owe money to your credit card company? Um. I, I don't think there is a limit on what a credit card company can charge you. What they often do, for instance, if you miss a payment, so for instance, you have a credit uh, an interest rate of say 20%. When you miss a payment, they immediately increase your interest rate to say 29%. And, um, and you, you can negotiate with stuff. I have done that with, uh, with people that I help with their credit, um, re, with their credit repair. And um, they sent a letter to the, or called them and, and said, well, we have now a budget and we are going to pay, uh, we would 
this is our, the money, this is our income, this is our living expenses, this is what we have available for debt. And it would help us immensely, we will pay on time, and it will help us immensely if you could uh, reduce the rate. And in certain circumstances, I have seen that um, credit card companies did that. And I know we just heard you talk about finding out your credit score, your credit score um, without having to pay into a cost for that. Uh, but someone asks, is it true that if you check your credit score more than once a year, it will affect your credit score? Is that possible? No. Good. No. That, okay. that is not possible. No. Great. Thank you. Um, can you cancel? Oh, no, we already did this. So you were very good at presenting why you don't want to cancel credit cards, even yes. if you're not using them, yeah. because it's going to change the formula of yeah. how much interest, how much you have to be able to draw down. So we don't have yeah. to go. I, I always advise people to put them in the freezer in, in water so that they don't <laughs> have impulse, take them out to use them <laughs> if they don't trust themselves. <laughs> An interesting theory. Yeah. Um, you never know what you're going to find in the freezer. Exactly. <laughs> you don't realize you take your glasses off when you're in the freezer looking for the ice cream or something. But they check the freezer. <laughs> um, all right. Can you, excuse me. So let's say you've been successful at paying off your debt and your credit um, score has gone up. Mm hmm can you do something to negotiate with your credit card companies about lowering the interest rates on the cards now that you've improved your credit score? Um, well, uh, only a, a higher interest, uh, sorry, a higher credit score will not cause your interest rate to go down. In, in general, the interest rate that the credit card is company is charging on your balance is what you agreed to in the agreement that you signed when you signed up. So you might be able to negotiate, as I said before, if there's a reason that they increased the interest rate because of late fees or uh, late payments, and that you now, by um, having that higher credit score, can prove that you have been paying on time for a considerable period. So that is worth negotiating. Yes, if that is the reason. And if you've got a better credit score now and you've been paying off the debt, are you in a better position to apply for a new card that might come with a lower rate rather than yeah. hoping you can negotiate with the old card company? Yes, absolutely. And you can open another credit card uh, that has a lower rate and you can, can transfer the balance. Okay, and then you can might, take the old card and put it in the freezer in the ice container. Exactly. And you, there might be a trans, a balance transfer fee. So that's what you have to check. Got it. Okay. And some cards charge you annual fees, and some cards don't. Yeah. I mean, I would assume you want to go for a card with the lowest annual fee. But is there a reason that some of the cards that charge you a fee might be a better deal for you for some reason? Well, that is very personal because the deal, uh, every credit card has uh, some benefits. And if you pay for it, then they provide you with more benefits that might be useful for you. But if they're not useful, then I would say, uh, like for instance, uh, a credit card for of an airline company that when you have uh, a $500 per year card that allows you access to their lounges. Well, that is nice if you make use of it and if you fly a lot. But if not, then I would say, well, go for the free, uh, a free uh, and with no, a credit card with no annual fee. So sometimes you see cards being advertised that are cash back. I, mean, I always wonder, like, is that possible? Is that I mean, it almost sounds like it's too good to be true. They're giving you three or five percent back on anything you buy. How does the math work out there? Do, are those companies charging you more interest? Are they well, getting you somehow in another way? Oh, no, that's not. You know, you re you have to realize that a, a credit card company doesn't only charge you for an interest, but every payment that you do, they charge the 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 
um, the seller, the, the vendor that you pay with the credit card. And that is off of 4% or something. And um, that's 5% cash back that is only on, on certain, uh, certain items. And that probably maybe they, these vendors might even pay more. Um, I don't know, but you, you can get that cash back um, and you cannot, that, that's all the rewards points that I was talking about. Got it. And you mentioned before um, the reason to use a credit card to build up a history of paying what you owe and even yeah. some credit cards where they have you sort of prepay and then you're drawing down. I get that. And is there an advantage or a disadvantage of using a debit card instead, which also just yes. is sort of taking the money directly out of your yeah. bank account? Yeah, um, you're, when you use a debit card, it's not reported to, on, to a, a consumer uh, reporting agency. So you cannot build your credit has history with a debit card. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, Stephanie. Um, yes, Senator Kruger, I'll just add one point. So for people who have maybe spending habit issues, it might be advisable to use debit card directly. That way, you know, you're drawing from your bank, so you're not overspend. So that would be potentially one good reason to use a debit card as opposed to credit card. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you. Um, okay. So my credit card debt has risen. Do you recommend working with agencies who purchase the debt and then you pay them? Do you think that's a good idea ever? Well, those are called debt consolidating companies and I would be very careful with them. Often they are for profit. There are also nonprofit ones, but there's also for-profit one, and I have seen cases that, um, well, one of the things is that um, you have to continue, you get on a payment plan and you have to continue paying them. And almost more than 75% of people who use such a debt consolidation, uh, they drop out of the plan. And then they have sometimes even more debt because they built up also the debt, the cost for the debt consolidator and their, their credit is uh, very hurt. So I, I would not advise or recommend them. What I would recommend is a debt management company that they work very differently. They, they um, help you make spending plan and they negotiate the debt with, with the vendors. Um, and um, those are, most of them are not for profit. So the New York City has uh, financial empower, empowerment center, centers that work for free in one-on-one -on -one debt counseling. And uh, there are also organizations like the National Foundation for uh, Credit Counseling those are what I would recommend. Or another one is Green Path. It's another organization that I had to have worked with in the past. So I've seen a number of new questions come in that relate to what do you do when the credit reporting agency seems to have made a mistake or the credit card agency has made a mistake? One question is um, a credit agency was manifest manifestly wrong about an item on the report, but refused to take off the strike. Is there somebody who can intercede with me, intercede for me with the credit agency? I even have court records to prove my case, but the agency doesn't seem to care. What can you do in that situation? Well, I would say uh, uh, you can contact one of those uh, empowerment centers. I'm sure that they have experience with that, but there's also an organization um, that is uh, from the, um, that are lawyers and that is called Claro New York. And 
they can, uh, their lawyers can help you. They, they pro bono lawyers. And um, this might be a case that, that they could uh, certainly, if you have tried everything and you have the paperwork. Um, but I, I would also suggest that any uh, communication you have about such mistakes, that you do that in writing and that you keep well the copies of everything. And that if you talk to them uh, on the phone, that you write down names and uh, that you record. Uh, who you spoke to and, and what was, uh, was spoken about so that you have these records. Great. So I'm also just going to read the two other questions that were related, and I think your answers are the same groups. One, if your credit card company for some reason freezes your account and they won't even talk to you about it. So it sounds like those same agencies might be follow-up. I mean, if they freeze the account because you owe them a lot of money, I'm not sure what you can do. If they freeze your account because they made some kind of mistake, um, I think you ought to be able to do something. The, yeah, the freeze in the, of the account, it could be sometimes happening when um, they think that there is a breach of um, ident identity. And then they might might freeze it. So that that can cause severe problems, especially if you're abroad or whatever that you have that you cannot access or that you cannot use your credit card anymore. Um, it's often if you travel abroad, a good good idea to inform your credit card company because they monitor where your um, card is used. So if they, you always use it in New York and you suddenly are in Georgia, then they are suspicious. And, and sometimes they send you a message, but in some cases they might freeze it. And um, so if you inform them in advance from what your plans are for travel, that at least uh, makes it easier. And the other to do is freeze a frozen card, just contact the company and um, have always maybe a backup cord with you. Yeah. And you actually touched on this, the, the possible breach of your card or identity theft. Yes. I, mean, I know we're going to talk about this another evening and we're almost done now, but the scams that are going on are almost endless about how we used to think somebody had to steal your credit card and then you were in trouble and then you knew you had to call your credit card company. Nowadays, nobody has to steal your credit card. Come your credit card. They don't even seem to have to have like listened over your shoulder when you were mm -hmm. in a store using your credit card. There's just endless ways yeah. they can get the information, or they go fishing through mm -hmm. the, the internet or through dialing you and telling you, you know, they're your bank and there's been a breach and you have to give them certain information. No, that's not how banks do it. Or you get texts saying you must put information in. No, that's not how they do it. Um, so what are your best advice about what to do if you think that there's been a compromise on your credit card? You got bills for things that you, you know you weren't in Cincinnati buying $1,000 worth of balloons yesterday, thank you. Um, or that you've gotten these weird texts and you made the mistake of texting them back some information and now everything seems to be wrong. What are you supposed to do then? Um, well, I would certainly inform the credit card company immediately. Um, but there's also, if, if it is a larger identity theft, there are different steps that you have to go through. And I think there's now a website that's called Identity Theft dot gov from the government that points out exactly how to do this. Um, the Federal Trade, um, the FTC um, Corporation has also um, a lot of information on their website. I think that is one of the resources that we um, have mentioned in our uh, and and, and yeah, a police report work is often um, recommended, but that is often difficult to get. So the, the FTC 
tells you all about it, what you have to do. I'll just add yes. one, yes. sorry, I'll just add one thing really quickly. Um, you know, while you're waiting to make the call, sometimes you can go to your bank's website and put like lock a credit card immediately so no one can further spend money on your credit card. Mm -hmm. And a final question that I will try to get to quickly, so unusual, but interesting. So someone did something to you, they owe you money, you were awarded in, in court that they owe you this money, but they haven't paid. Can you file that somehow with their um, credit report so that you're actually holding them accountable to pay you money you they owe you by basically messing up their credit record if they don't pay you. Is there, a, can a private citizen try to impact that so that your credit report shows, uh, hello, you owe so-and-so money from a court case that you've never paid? Um, I don't really know the answer to this question. I think it all depends on how to how you can prove that that, that person um, owes you money. Uh, but you can always contact contact them and ask this. I mean, if you have all the paperwork that that person didn't pay you back, then that might be possible. I don't know. A fascinating question to, to close down with tonight. Um, we actually now have hit our time frame. So I want to thank both of you for being with us tonight. I want to remind everybody all the information that you've heard tonight and the um, PowerPoint and the resources listed in our chat will all be available to you within a day or two. I want to again uh, thank you and your organization for making you available to us and remind everyone that part two of our virtual financial planning series on taxes is scheduled for next Tuesday evening. That's September 19th, also from 7 to 8 p.m. Between now and then, I also want to wish those of you who are celebrating Rosh Hashanah to have a sweet and happy New Year's, Shana Tova is what we say in my religion. Um, and I will hope that you will rejoin us next Tuesday. Again, pandemic, stay safe, mask up in indoor spaces, spaces, wash your hands, talk to your doctors about which kinds of vaccines you should make sure to get even in what order while we're still waiting for the new COVID-19 vaccine to be available, hopefully in a very short period of time. Thank you to my staff, as well as our special guests and have a good evening, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.